Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Well, Cobalt Tool fans, it's finally here. The 24 volt max brushless router has finally arrived. So let's take a look at what you get with this tool. So first thing we do before we unbox this here, we're gonna look at the tool grid here across the top. And there is nothing here that really strikes my fancy as being new that we don't already know about. What I think is interesting about this graphic is it does not show the garden sprayer or the misting fan. All the other tools on here are tools that we already know about. So if we go around to the back side of the box, we'll be able to look at some specifications on this here. An on off switch, variable speed control. We've got uh, the lever for adjusting it up and down, edge guide, and apparently a dust port attachment. It's got a soft start motor. And if you purchase this in store right now, you can also get a two amp hour battery for free. We'll set that aside. So let's take a look at and see what you get with this tool. We've got our user manual. We've got some accessories. It looks like we've got our collet wrench and some screws and a dust port. We have the router and our edge guide tucked off to the side. All right, so here is the tool. We've got, as I hold this here in my hand, we've got there's a 24 volt max branding into the bottom rubber there. The overmold here is actually pretty comfortable. It's not bad. It's got some of the same design elements as the other drills in the lineup here. This has a manufacture date of April, 2020. So that's about, what, six months ago, give or take? This is October now. Now this is actually kind of neat here in terms of the adjustment. There's a gear that you can turn to adjust this to provide the fine tuning adjustment. And the tighter, I use my left hand here to be able to adjust the tension with the locking lever. The easier it is to get a fine adjustment. And there is a measuring scale on the side. If I let it go all the way out here, We've got a little over two inches on the left. Then on the right, we've got millimeters to about 54 millimeters. Then we have our variable speed controller here and the on off switch. And then the battery mounts on top. And then we have our collet here at the bottom as well as the locking switch here or the locking uh, arbor lock to be able to change out our bits. There are no bits included with this, so you need to supply your own bits. There is also the edge guard that can be used as an accessory with this, as well as a desk port. So let's open this up here. So then with the, for this desk port here, this can just go right over the top of the open side and there's a spot for a thumb screw on one side here and a thumb screw on, actually that's not a thumb screw. There was just one thumb screw there is all that would take. I would advise only using this if you're actually gonna use it with a vacuum. If you're not gonna be using this with a vacuum, using this is, doesn't, is not gonna make a lot of sense. And then we can just go ahead and Lock that in place like that. Well, I'm a little concerned that over time this will break or fall off. So like I've said in some of my other Cobalt videos, one of the big concerns I have about the Cobalt lineup is the ability to be able to buy replacement parts. I can tell they're getting better at it, you know, with uh, some of their chainsaw parts that are coming out here now. Now for the installation of the edge guide, you may need to loosen up the knob here for adjustment. And then this is going to mount on the back side of the tool here. There's a little guide that this can just go into like this. And then there's, there is some vertical adjustability with this. It would be nice if this actually came with a slightly larger washer than what this includes with it for being able to lock this down in place. I'm sure it's large enough to at least work. There we go, and then we can tighten that down 
and we've got some, uh, some depth adjustment and this can slide in or out and it's got a small taper here. It'd be nice to see if these edges here were kind of bent back a little bit farther, kind of like, I don't know, I guess we'd describe it as wings to ensure that you can move gently all the way down the work surface uh, that you're trying to use as your reference. So I may or may not in the future try to bend this back a little bit with some vice grips. That's a little disappointing. I think most other edge guards have a nice little angle taper on either side just to be able to ensure you get a nice uh, tracking action as you go. So for right now, I'm just gonna take this edge guard off. And you see how easily that comes off whenever it's not in use. So you can just leave that thumb screw there if that doesn't bother you. You can see from just the way that I'm holding this here that that thumb screw there would not be the most comfortable location to have for me to hold where it's at. If I wasn't really intentionally planning on using it, unless I move my grip up a little bit higher instead of where I want to be kind of right down here. So I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I understand the limitations in terms of how you have to figure out where that would go. So it looks like the wrench they give you is a 17 millimeter wrench. So you could replace that if you wanted to toss this little cheap guy out here with just a standard 17 millimeter wrench. That will go around it no problem. Get the arbor lock there in place. Or if you don't have a metric wrench set, an 11 16 would also work. It's a little bit sloppier. It's not perfect, but it definitely would work to get the job done. And so now I'm going to grab a bit and we're going to do a little bit of a quick test here to see how this works. So the bit I'm going to use is a Freud, I believe this is called a quadra cut. This is on a quarter inch round over. This is one of my favorite bits. It gives me a nice clean finish. Just like that. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this vacuum attachment. I'm not gonna be using the vacuum right now. And for my sanity, I'm gonna take off the bolt for holding the edge guide. And now we're gonna slide this over. So there's plenty of room on this by fully seating the quarter inch shank bit. And then I can try to raise this up here and then to try to dial this down to get this just right. As I push over on the locking lever to try to dial this down precisely exactly where I want. to try to get a nice quarter inch round over without digging too deep. Right about there. And then we're gonna check the battery. So this tool, because of its compact size, you may or may not wanna use a compact battery. This is the two amp hour battery. Seats on just like that, which then means that on this end here, we've got our speed control and our lock and our on off. So let's turn this on. Hopefully you saw the LED lights kick on there. One more thing I wanna check is to see if this is compatible with the ultimate output battery. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work but there is the issue with the grinder, or at least some of the older versions. I think they've got an update that now works with it. So I'm gonna leave this on its backside here as we give this a quick test with the ultimate output battery. Perfect. So that works as well. So that's probably gonna be a better choice for a four amp hour battery compared to grabbing the taller, beefier, regular four amp hour battery. And according to the user manual, this is also supposedly compatible with the older 1.5 amp hour batteries, but those are about the same size as these two, so that you're not really gaining anything other than losing half an amp hour with those batteries. So now let's go over and find a workpiece and give this a quick test. All right, now for a quick test, I got some one by material here that I've clamped down to my workbench. I've got the two amp hour battery on the router here. 
I've got the set on speed uh, setting four. And then I'm gonna turn this on and give it a quick test. Let's see how this does. There we go. Nicely done, performed very well on this piece of white pine. One of the big things when it comes to any router is having a good quality sharp bit is gonna help ensure that the router is doing the least amount of work and you're letting the bit actually cut the way it is supposed to. So now to up the ante a little bit, I've got a piece of solid oak. This has aged in my garage probably, where are we at? We're at probably about seven years that I've had this, give or take. Uh, this is just a kind of a scrap piece of wood here. We're gonna see if we can give it a round over. Same setting before with this cobalt router, just to try on something a little bit harder than regular soft white pine. No problem. It handled that oak just fine. So now that you've seen this in use a couple times on a couple different surfaces, let me share a couple thoughts with you that I've got about this tool. From what I've played with here off camera as well, I think this tool has performed fine. It's certainly, you know, I like the soft start. It's got a nice feel. It feels relatively balanced in my hand, especially with a two amp hour battery. And I think this would be perfect for any job site location or project where you don't have access to power or you have something quick to be able to take with you. But I think there are definitely a handful of limitations of this tool. Obviously the first one is that, is that it's a quarter inch collar, but that's actually really not a limitation because that's kind of why you would select this because it's nice and compact with that quarter inch uh, limitation. However, a couple of the things that I decided or figured out that I don't really like on it. Number one, routers are dangerous tools. And I really wish it was a little easier to get to the on off switch here to be able to make sure I could turn it uh, off after I've started it. However, I do appreciate that I can set this upside down and flip the switch right here pretty easily. It'd be nice if it was just a, a little bit easier push button either way to be able to turn it on or off just to make sure you get it off. But on the other hand, this also helps to limit its ability to be turned on. And maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence if there should be another little mechanism to be able to, you need to press to be able to, to be able to actually turn this on kind of like a lockout like you might find on a grinder. I don't know, I'm kind of undecided on that. You know, in my mind, what I'm comparing this up against here is my Porter cable, one here that's corded. Obviously that's the big difference between these two tools, but I think it goes a little bit farther than that. On the Porter cable by comparison, and DeWalt's got basically the, the same router, the only difference is the Porter cable, I'm sorry, the DeWalt, has a couple LED lights on the bottom that the Porter cable doesn't have. Kind of indifferent on that. The first thing with this Porter cable is it has a micro adjustment just by turning this dial here. And it makes it very easy to just almost effortlessly make very fine adjustments. Because I don't have to worry about the plate going up and down because it's a screwing manner. Whereas on this tool, let me just take off the battery here. For me to make a fine adjustment, I have to take this off and then make sure I turn this however fine I want. But as, as I turn this here, you know, it's not too hard to be able to over adjust it. And it'd be nice if there was a maybe a little bit easier fine adjustment method to be able to get it. I mean, you can do it as by applying tension with the lever here to just kind of work it up or down but it's definitely a little more precarious compared to what the Porter cable or the DeWalt variant is. The other difference here, if you look at the base plate here between these two, is this Porter cable has a perfectly round base, which has been nice because I've been able to put it in some 
uh, mortising fixtures that I've made. And it doesn't matter which way I go, whenever I'm using a spiral cut bit to be able to clear out a mortise. Whereas with this cobalt one, it would only fit into a fixture just right. And the other issue is this, the distance from here, from the left side to the center of the bit, from the center of the bit to the right side is not the same. So let's get out the tape measure here just to show you here with the, the tape. So from the left side here, it's about an inch and a half. And then if you go all the way over, if you were to double it, that would be three, but instead that's about three and a half inches. So this bit is not perfectly centered on the base, which I certainly see as an issue. In some contexts, if you're using this with a jig or a fixture where you're not gonna be running it with a bearing on the bottom. If you've got a bearing on the bottom, then this is just fine. Like I know Porter Cable actually has a squared off edge base like this that you can get. I've not bought it, but it certainly does exist for other conditions that you may want, which maybe this is more advisory for or uh, preferable for. Uh, the other thing that this Porter Cable has, that'd be nice if this Cobalt would have or eventually have, would be a plunge base, because then I can take this and then use this to plunge a mortise or to plunge a keyhole or something else that I need to be able to start, whereas there is no plunge option here. But for what it is, this is the perfect router if you have a job site where you don't have electricity and you need to run bearing bottom bits. This would be perfect for it, you know, like a quarter inch round over, a three eighths round over, a chamfer or something else like that, it'll certainly work. So there's lots of possibilities for what you can do with this. The only other limitation that you're gonna have is gonna be the hole in the base here. So for example, I've got a half inch round over bit here. Set this out here. And so this is a half inch round over bit. And if I try to fit this half inch round over bit through this hole, it does not fit. Now granted, I suppose I could run part of it part of the way through, but I would not be able to get the full effect of the half inch roundover on a large surface to get that full smooth taper out to get that full extent of that half inch radius. So there's gonna be some sizes that don't work. So here's the half inch roundover one that does not work. Here is a 3 8 roundover, which does work, which is right about at the limit. So you're gonna to have to pay attention to your bit size. And so the diameter of that hole works out to about an inch and three eighths. So if your bit is any larger than that, it's not gonna fit and that's gonna be a problem. But for your basic quarter inch roundover, this is perfect. And I would speculate, at least for me, I'll probably be using this with a quarter inch roundover probably 90% of the time. And especially knowing the limitations, I'm not sure I would reach for this tool for anything other than a quarter or an eighth or a smaller roundover bit uh, or a straight bit uh, such as a flush trim bit. So with that, that's just your quick very first look at this Cobalt brushless router. Questions or comments, put it down below. This runs about $119 at Lowe's and like I said before, you can pick it up with a free two amp hour battery at least as of uh, mid-October 2020. Your first look here at it. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.